um, I earned good money maybe too quickly in my life and then decided one day that my life was finished. I, I needed a little bit more adventure. I needed something else in my life. It wasn't money that made me happy and having a house and the newest car, I, I needed adventure. So my name is Mike Horn and I'm a professional explorer, born in South Africa a long time ago, about 57 years ago, and currently living in Switzerland. Um, my first explorations took me to the Amazon jungle where I swam down the entire length of the, the Amazon river for 7,000 kilometers. And then I had a dream of following the equator around the world. So. In 1999, I did the first circumnavigation of the world, unmotorized, crossing the oceans with a small sailing boat and all the continents and the islands of Indonesia on foot. Um, and then I got tired of uh, the, the, the warmer climates and I decided to focus on the polar regions. And in 2006, I did an expedition where I became the first person in the world with a Norwegian explorer to go to the North Pole during winter. I did a circumnavigation of the world uh, along the Arctic Circle that took me two years and three months alone. Then I decided to climb some of the highest mountains in the world. And as I climb uh, without oxygen in the Alpine style, uh, just with another friend of mine that's uh, a very good uh, Himalayist. Um, I managed to summit four 8,000 meter peaks without oxygen. And then uh, for me, the South Pole was obviously uh, one of my big dreams. And I did the first ever crossing of the entire continent of the South Pole. And then did the entire traverse of the North Pole. So for more than 32 years, I live my life outside and I've been um, passionate about the environment and what we are experiencing lately in um, the planet being threatened by human behavior. I was really lucky to have um, I've had parents that allowed me uh, to have a lot of freedom and when you do have a lot of freedom uh, then you can develop what you love doing. 
And I had one rule that was given to me from a very young age, was that at six o'clock at night, I have to be at home. Um, so my mother always said, you can leave home, but you have to come back in the same way that you left home. And being, being able to have as much freedom taught me a lot of responsibility at a very young age. And my father, um, being a professor at, at university and my mother in the world of education as well, understood very quickly that by trying to control what I wanted to do uh, made me half the man that I could have been. And I always came back home at six o'clock respecting the one rule that I had. And then I could share with my father what I lived through the day and what I did. And he was always there to listen to me. So that is exactly how he knew where I was and what I was doing. And then I would say, yes, I was trying to swim across this river and I couldn't get across. And then he said, okay, tomorrow I will take you and I will show you how it will be done. So he let me live my experiences and then he taught me how to make these experiences safe and sure. As he was as well uh, a South African rugby player, a uh, sportive personality, um, he was really well respected by the people when we walked down the streets. People would come and congratulate him on how he played and for the team that he was support, uh, playing for. Um, he was an iconic figure. And as a father, having a lot of me as a kid um, being inspired by him, uh, I thought that, you know, one day maybe why not be like him? But uh, one day when I told him that maybe I would like to be him, my father just said, um, Mike, you, you cannot be me. You have to be who you are. That's the easiest person to be. And then, he, then I said, but you inspire me. And he said, actually, Mike, no. I'm inspired by you and I can see that you can be much bigger and better than I would ever be. And all I did as a young kid was believe what he said. And that led me to self-confidence, to be able to go out there and explore the world like I'm doing today. So, so in, in, in South Africa, I was brought up during the, the period of apartheid and mm -hmm. South Africans couldn't participate in sport uh, any, anywhere around the world. And then we had as well two years obligatory military service. We were fighting the proxy war in Angola and South Africa was in a very difficult situation in the African bush war. Um, fighting against Russian insurgents supported by the US and that made um, me understand that if I can do the best in what I do then I can make a difference so um, when I finished school I had to do my obligatory military service for two years where I was fighting in the war in Angola when I came back after my two years of obligatory military service I went and studied sport injuries and sport psychology. Then um, at 17 or 18 years old, before I went to the military, I lost my father. And I, I kind of felt that um, I needed my father to support me in many ways that I had doubt and that I had unanswered questions. Uh, but when he died, he said that Mike, I brought you up to be able to as well take care of the family and I know that you will take good care of them. So everything I did was with the responsibility of taking care and replacing my father as an icon. And that led me to study sports psychology and sport injuries and then do a master's degree in market management. And while I was doing my master's degree, working for a family company, um, I earned good money, maybe too quickly in my life, and then decided one day that my life was finished. I, I needed a little bit more adventure. I needed something else in my life. It wasn't money that made me happy, and having a house and the newest car, 
I, I needed adventure. And then I went to my uncle while I was working uh, in this family company and I said to him that I need to leave. And he said, Mike, leave now because if you feel you should go, this is the moment you should go. Don't wait for tomorrow or for the next month or the next week. And then in that day I left, I went to the airport and at that stage South Africans were boycotted. We couldn't travel around the world. And the only place that I could go to was England, Switzerland and Israel. And I went to the airport, there was one flight to Israel, no space, and the second flight took me to Switzerland. And that's where I live today. I, I think I have, um, I have constant fear in my life. And um, fear keeps me alive. But fear is not a negative element to my life. Like a lot of people do not want to be afraid. So they only stay in their comfort zone and they live a life where they control all, all the circumstances that would make them afraid. But fear has become my home. Fear is what I need inside myself to feel alive. And when I do expeditions like the crossing of the North Pole that has been done only by me and my partner and the crossing of the South Pole that I, I'm still the only man in the world to have crossed entirely um, the, the South Pole, I'm, I, I'm afraid of my dreams when I think of doing it. And then I try and build myself up with knowledge and experience to make that dream become reality. Mm -hmm. So the fear moment is when you, when you realize that what you're dreaming of is actually much bigger than what you think you can do. Mm -hmm. And then because nobody else has done it before, it becomes that moment of why do you think you can do it and others cannot do it. And that's where you need to be able to have the confidence in yourself that fear will be what protects you from dying. And as, a, as, as an explorer, um, starting my life very young, leaving home at 10 years old, I cycled 300 kilometers and not knowing what the outcome would be. I love that uncertainty. That uncertainty is what makes me feel alive. But then I understood very quickly that there's a lot of sacrifice that goes with this. There's a lot of doubt and uncertainty. There's a lot of moments that you think, but why am I yeah, doing what I'm really doing? Because if I make one mistake, I don't lose money. I don't lose a reputation. I lose a life. And that is to me the moment that I start feeling alive because when you live very close to to death you have that feeling of being alive well you know there's for me there's nothing in between death or being alive either you dead or you alive so um, I, I live close moments uh, from fighting the war in Angola but to swimming down the Amazon and being sucked underneath a, a, a river that knocked my head and I was unconscious and I found myself on the side of the river and I don't even know how I got there. And to a moment that during latitude zero I was put in front of a death squad in Congo that they shot the person next to me and, and they didn't shoot me first. To a moment that uh, I fell into the water at minus 40 in the Arctic Ocean and each each time you you know that these risks that you take are are, are life threatening risk and you hope that it would not happen but the moment that it happens that is the moment that you have to be able to understand that you will do anything 
to stave alive. Not only an explorer, but any of us that is put in a circumstance that we need to survive. That's when the best will come out of us. And for me as an explorer, is not I, I'm not looking for for that moment. I'm looking to find solutions for the moment to make my life as long as possible. I think um, having a family gave me more reason to stay alive. So, and my wife that I was married with for 28 years, unfortunately died of cancer. When you really love somebody and you lose somebody that's really important, you don't want, you don't want to take any more risk because you've got, only got your children and you've got to take care of them. And because I have daughters that knew me as an explorer, and not somebody that was at home, um, came to me after I lost my wife and, and said, but you've lost the sparkle in your eyes. You've lost, we lost our father. And now you're at home and we don't want you at home. We know you as the man that climbs the mountains, as the man that swims down the jungle. And they said, we will support you in what you do and you brought us up in a way that we can take care of ourselves. So go out and go back and go into exploration. And that to me was 100% love. If you love somebody, you set them free. Because by trying to keep them where you want them is not unconditional love. So for me, when my wife always asked me to come back alive, that was my main priority. My, my priority was for the freedom that she gave me, that she knew pretty well that if I make a mistake that I would pass away, but that I will do everything to stay alive, to come back. So this is the way that, we, that our family was brought up. And in many ways, what happened today is that my, my kids, my, the ones that I love the most, are following in my footsteps to be able to as well understand the world of an explorer. When I started exploring, unfortunately, we didn't have all the, 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 the social media platforms to be able to tell the world what you're doing. So we relied 100% on television and then on, on press. Mm -hmm. So today it's evolved into a, an easier way to tell your story on the social media platforms. But I'm old generation. I'm nearly 60 years old. And in many ways, I was, I was in, the, in the high point of my life with no social media platform. But it created a lot of um, interest in what I did. So what we could do is we could write books, and I loved writing books to share my experience with others. And when somebody told me and they would handwrite a letter to me or send an email that they read my book and that was it inspired them to go and do things, I love that part of it. I love the inspiration that you can give to other people. Sometimes just to say, you know, one life has 30,000 days. Half the time you sleep. and. 30,000 days to the age of 82 years old is not a lot of days we have to live because if you sleep half the time you've got only got 15,000 days to really do what you want to do and we cannot really afford to waste one of these days we don't have to all explore but we have to explore what we love doing if it's our job or if it's in journalism or in medicine or in engineering or being an artist just do with those days the most that you can and that is when that sharing of my experiences becomes interesting I'm not a very good social person in many ways. I, I love sharing what I do in my element with the people. And that's why I, I, I came up with um, the partnership with Explorer, because I love taking people out of this luxury into the wild and we must feel cold. 
because yeah we won we must feel hungry we must suffer a little bit because that makes us human you will see that the vessel is is is, is an amazing exploration vessel so i i knew that it was very difficult to get from one place of the planet to another place and it's even more difficult to get to remote places because nobody goes there and for me as an explorer i needed a tool a vessel that can take me anywhere in the world so that was the concept i needed to build a vessel so i have the freedom to go where i want to go but i didn't have the money nobody i wasn't a rich uh, uh, from a rich family so i had to be able to 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 count on sponsorship and partnerships and one day a, uh, a, a gentleman came to me and said mike i really i really respect what you do uh, do you have a dream i said yeah i have a dream of building this big boat mm -hmm. exploration uh, boat 35 meters mm -hmm. and he said um how are you going to pay for it and i said i don't know but I will find a way and then he said to me let's do a business deal I will take your name and the moment I take your name I will give you the money to build the boat so I sold my name my intellectual property uh, to the, a group called the Richmond group yeah. That's Cartier, Mont Blanc, okay. Panerai, and it was a South African called Johan Rupert. Mm -hmm. And Johan Rupert, being South African, studied at the same university uh, as uh, as us, uh, or I studied at the, he's a little bit older, studied at the same university he did, um, understood that I will never achieve my dreams if I don't have the right equipment. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to just give me the money to do it, there was supposed to be a business deal. And the moment he took my name and he gave me the vessel, I could go out there and do whatever I wanted to do. So I was sponsored by Mercedes-Benz for 22 years. I'm still sponsored by Panerai that supports my project. And with um, uh, MSC and, uh, and, and the, the group, of, of the Richmond knowing each other as well, we got introduced to to the MSC group. And when the Explorer vessel came out, that was exactly the moment that we could create this partnership that I can keep on exploring and then be able to add value to their brand as they add value to my brand. You know, Carl, it's, it's it's unbelievable when when you when you lose somebody that gives you the freedom to love. I never thought for one moment in my life that um, I thought I will die before she did because I was taking all the risks. Uh, but then you realize, in fact, that she was such an angel. She was so giving and not at all selfish. For me to be able to do what I do uh, was the reason why she felt that she was contributing to a bigger picture. And um, when she was really ill and I, I felt so sad and maybe selfish, I didn't want her to die because it's selfish, it's I want her with me, but in fact she can't stay with me. I don't own her. And at that moment, she was living through so much pain that I said, but maybe I should die with her. Maybe I'm, I, the only respect I can show her is if I, if I actually die with her. And when I spoke to her about it, and she looked me in the eyes, she said, Mike, um, the whole, your whole life you were fighting to stay alive and now you're willing to die. I don't think that's, mm. that's normal. Mm. 
and then she said something that really changed changed my thought process she said why do you want to die with me if you can live for me and that made me realize that yes we can live for others that we love we can we can inspire people and in a way life is not forever and what she said was 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 really touching to me she said you are going to die as well one day and we all die but we don't all live so while you're alive live and to me that's exactly what I was trying to do but when you have that massive loss I lost my father when I was 18 now I come to me uh, I lost my mother I lost my sister I lost my wife I've lost everybody that I love but each time you kind of stand up and you look up and you say wow I can live for all of them and you can feel their presence when you cross that's why maybe I go out there because in nature there's a presence there's the energy not always in the cities and in, in, in places like this but when I go out alone I, I feel I'm with those people So I crossed the South Pole and um, I was sailing up to the North Pole because I did an expedition called Pole to Pole, the first circumnavigation of the world crossing both poles. And in a massive typhoon, Typhoon 10, um, I, I went to Hong Kong to look for shelter. And I was not supposed to go there, but the weather pushed me there. And I arrived in a, in a bay where I was sheltered by the wind and this bay was called Deep Water Bay in Hong Kong and I, I dropped the anchor in front of the building where now my wife uh, was living not knowing at all that something like that would happen and she was looking through the window and, and, and basically seeing this vessel come in and, and everybody was fighting to survive and there was this one boat dropping anchor and then obviously she came out to, to see what who it was and straight away it was like wow um, yes we we talked we we shared a, a moment together and when she left I said wow this is this is amazing because I'm not looking for somebody but I think some some way nature has, has sent us together mm -hmm. and because she lived through the same experience with loss and I lived through the same experience with loss we were living in different parts of the world and suffered the same loss and that made and that made us get together mm -hmm. I think we, we, we can provoke luck we can put luck on our side mm -hmm. And I've never won any money, so I, I cannot play in the casino because I'm not lucky. Mm -hmm. But I'm lucky with life because if you, if you do good, if your heart is good, if your values are true, then you will find eternal love and luck. But now, now I'm on a four-year expedition. Because. I'm on a four-year adventure called What's Left. Mm -hmm. And this four-year adventure is, is a little bit selfish because I still have dreams. And when I, when I spend winter in Greenland, frozen in the ice, I have the freedom to go and climb mountains and cross the ice cap where nobody else does that. So I have in all the different parts in the world I have big dreams one up in the Arctic one in the Amazon one in, in Patagonia one in in Antarctica and then one in Australia so those places will be my next expeditions for the next four years and then I will get back home when I'm 62 and then I'm sure I will have new ideas to go out there and keep on exploring until I get to 100 years old